Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Jeff Fisher. Jay Donovan. Me, Todd Novak. And special guest knob number one. Jared Brandon. And special guest knob number two. That's you. Uh, it's Derek Asun O'Brien. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Derek O'Brien of Lincoln Guitars. Uh, undoubtedly, anybody listening has uh, most assuredly seen the uh, beautiful guitars that uh, he creates on, um, on Instagram and elsewhere. And we are super crazy excited to talk to him today. Um, so much so that we're not going to talk to him right away. First, we're going to talk, <laughs> <laughs> First, we're going to talk about, um, you know, what we have going on in our own music worlds today as per usual. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad we're doing this episode, finally. <sighs> okay, Hefe, go. I'm still waiting for Jay to return my gear. That's what's <laughs> new. He's not doing anything <laughs> new because I still have all this stuff. Not all of it, but some of it. Most of it. So... Several. Still waiting for it. That's <laughs> several of it. Feels so dirty. It better not be dirty when it comes back. Well, the cat didn't pee on it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but the dog did. There's still time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The cat yeah. peed on Todd's yeah. guitar, though. M- many cats peed on my stuff. I think so. Oh man. Uh, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, oof. Um, although I have, I think I've, I think I might have saved Stinky. Uh, I got a little Febreze on that action, and I think <laughs> it's it, not. I think it's doing working good, man. It might. You got to get that cat. Urine removal stuff. I don't you. even have a cat. That's Let's go the to the crazy pet thing. store. You, can, you, you need to throw there. that base into the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> into the core of the earth. That's uh, the only way. Ah, can... Let's melt it down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, speaking of bottom of the ocean, I watched the Jim Gaffigan special last night. Holy crap. His bit about crabs, I was crying. I was absolutely crying. If anybody hasn't seen that on Netflix, I am no, I'm not associated, affiliated with Jim Gaffigan <laughs> in any way. Watch it. Oh my gosh, it's hysterical. Anyways, um, okay, Jared, what do you got? Well, <clears throat> it's not besides about a space echo. I really hope is. that doesn't show up on oh, the actual will. Rec- what? It will. Oh yeah, space oh, echo, special man. guest echo is what we call it. Hey, as long as you can understand me. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so weird. So, so if no one's listened to the last episode, I, I build pickups. And what's new in my <laughs> what's new in my world is is uh, I discovered that in the mid '60s Gibson put some uh, magnets in their pickups that are orientated the wrong way. Ooh. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much new in my guitar world. Okay. Wait a minute. Like, what kind of elaborate? Okay, a bar, a, you've got bar magnets for humbuckers, and the long skinny side that emits a magnification uh, to both coils the way the, the thing's built. You, you had Jay at long and skinny. Right. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, dude, holy whoa. moly. My ear, my ear, you're blowing me out. No, so so, the, plan. so the magnet you. orientation is just, is it's on the, uh, the two ends and, and not the correct side. So the magnet's not going to work correctly. So, Yeah. That's, okay, so you're you're on the you're on the job. You're gonna fix that. You're gonna. Well, of course, I already fixed it and sent okay. it back to the customer. But uh, it's it's very true, and uh, frankly, you, I can't believe it. Lot, it got, I can't believe it got past the uh, the uh, quality check if there was one in '65. Wow, maybe so. maybe there's something happening on television or something, <laughs> and they all took a break. Maybe it's just a long lunch break. I don't know. So it's Jeff is and, definitely trying to slip a a, a microphone. Screen condom onto the without anybody knowing a windscreen <laughs> just, let's just do it real fast all at once hear it? Oh, that sounds hear it? terrible what are you guys doing oh you did it without hearing yeah, that's good yeah and what did you want more volume Woo. or um, less volume yeah jay jay was like he well i got really holy close to mackerel it. here i'll stand back a little yeah, bit just stand, that? Just stay you back don't, have, don't touch any well but dials we need, you, we need your good metering on here yeah meter him Meter yeah. me. Meter me. Okay. Uh, wait, so in Jeff's, did we just cover off on Jay's too? No. Okay, what's yours, dude? I've been on, uh, you know, how I've, lately I've been going on these, um, you know, you know how on Wikipedia it's link to link. You go, you follow yeah, the links. and the you, link you, wormhole. And you, yeah, you waste like two hours of your life. Right. You learn things, right? So yes. it's good. 
Uh, I had another YouTube wormhole, earworm, whatever you said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Wormhole. Wormhole. And, uh, and, and uh, your worm is when you hear right, and something and you can't your... get rid right of. Right, so, stand okay. back, stand back. Like that. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I was doing a sl- I was on a sly in the family stone. Like, for some reason, I looked them up playing at, at uh, you know, I want to take you higher on at Comfest. And so then I went on this little adventure following this finding out who the next, you know, the bass player that replaced Larry Graham was. It was this dude named Rusty Allen. And then I saw this amp he was playing. I was like, yeah, that's a PV. And this is in, like, the early 70s. Oh, and the I, old PV stuff is good. Yeah, and but I have a hate, hate relationship with PV because I used to have this huge <laughs> oh, 15, 16 bass cabinet that was so horrible. Um, the one that I hated, and I was like, maybe it'll just break and die, but it never did. Interesting. It was so, it was so strong. Uh so anyway, he was playing at, I think he was playing a bass 400, which I think was solid state, which yeah. I don't, you know, it's not so, hmm. not so great, but uh, I think they called it trans tube technology. Trans so I learned technology. about, that's what's new is I learned about trans tube technology, which is, I think, solid state. That's it. Oh. That's, it didn't really, you know, if you were expecting like. Wow, that was really anticlimactic. This arc of the story to keep trans going Trans tube technology. Oh, it's solid state. Okay. Yep. But that's a white leather and white uh, grill Yeah, and I couldn't, I couldn't really find... I think it must have been that is funky. Rusty Allen's uh, custom. Wow. I don't really see too many white ones. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. That's good. That's all the first, That's Sly and the Family Stone's first appearance on this show. Won't be the last. Yeah. I wonder if that white kept its color. It's probably know. like yellowish. Yeah. By now. It's like That's cat probably peanut. nasty. Um, let's see. Uh, let's let's go over to Derek. Derek, what is new in your music world this time in your life and this time period? I try not to say <laughs> I try not to say week because it's you know okay. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's What's time. new? What's new? Uh oh. <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> <He just hung. laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Oh boy! Did it hang up? What the hell just happened? Hello? <laughs> uh, okay, hang on. Let's get him back. <laughs> that, that, he was that really timing, hating this interview. <laughs> the timing was so perfect, man. Oh man! This will be, we'll start over with the the fresh call in. Here we go. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think we should keep that. I think we I, shall. Uh, if he answers okay we got yeah this got is everyone. real we everyone don't have we don't have text we haven't we don't have a bunch of hired people doing this for us <laughs> <laughs> okay it's derek legit. what is going on <laughs> please don't hang up <laughs> <laughs> what is going on please don't hang in up your please. music world right now um <clears throat> um honestly uh not that much i've just been working so much i haven't really uh gotten a chance to look into well that counts but your music world is our music world really because you're the one who's making those things so um it's uh, just a lot of process stuff really um it's sort of a combination of right now i'm just trying not to get um uh kind of looking into casting some aluminum for some parts oh and that's been that's been trying not to burn the shop down that's cool yeah. Like, like molten, a, like you have a smelter and are like pouring. Yeah, it's 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 metal. it's super boot. It's super. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. No, okay. it's 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 pretty bootleg and it hasn't been successful yet. <laughs> uh, is this for like just hardware you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Just trying to make more and more of the actual parts. That's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, if it works out, it's gonna be awesome. That's super cool. It's so much better when you can say your product's made in house, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 nice to have like kind of as few sort of off the shelf pieces yeah. as possible. Yeah. Um, so then you have to probably mill all that down and whatnot, right? To mill uh, it to shape uh, and or is it all? No, he's done? casting it. So yeah, yeah, but usually there's something you gotta gotta clean it up. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. Kind of trying that sort of the. There's a couple different processes. There's that kind of like lost um, wow. wax one yeah. and just yeah. sand casting and, um, you know. I think it'll come along, but I'm trying to figure out 
how to do it get the least sort of grainy and kind of as of right now it's more trying to sand things out than actual pieces coming oh well we look forward to hearing and seeing what what that's all about you have it's to get the report yeah. back yeah i mean if if you know if if uh if I tell you the shop burned down, you'll know why. <laughs> Just don't make like skull knobs or something. <laughs> don't do no, that. no, none of that. <laughs> no, trying to trying to make like a kind of a vibrato sort of kind okay. of TK Smithy. Just so you know, uh, the Minister of Information here is is scrolling your site and just got to the. Um, speedboat sparkle blue and Jared Brandon just lost his mind. Me like he, oh, he loves. I'm glad. He loves glad. the sparkle. That, that, I'm glad. Sadly, that one's kind of um, having to hang out for a little bit because it was supposed to be a demo, but I'm trying to catch up on some orders right now. So it's just sitting here taunting me, being very, very sparkly. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's pretty sparkly. Man, oh man. It catches oh, your that eye. Great. That's for Golly. sure. Well, okay. I'm. I'm. Wow. Okay. Hey, ask me what. So, Todd, what, what, what did you do? <laughs> What's new with you? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I'm okay. So I've been we've been mentioning how um, I got this new amp from that Dave Harris built me, and I've been on the search for a cabinet or either to build the cabinet, and we don't have to talk about it anymore. So we're not building a cabinet. No, I should have told you that. I bought one. I figured that out. Which is <laughs> <laughs> fine. I I was about to throw in the towel and and buy one of the empty cabinets off of um I think off of Amazon. It was like 150 bucks and then like 20 bucks shipping. And I really didn't want to do that. Um but I was running out of stuff cuz I got a show coming up and I'm like I I got I I got to pull the trigger. I got to do something. And I almost bought the speakers, but I was holding out cuz something in my gut was like Don't and then I pulled open Craigslist and like, you know, I do every five minutes and I just happened to pull it up. And this guy had a um, mint condition 212 Carvin cabinet with uh, uh, Celestian uh, Vintage 30s in it. And he sold it to me for a price that I could not refuse. It was cheap. Um, and so I set that up and it is pretty sweet. It came with the cover and everything. So I'm really stoked. Um, nice. Extremely. It's just super well made. It's, I, just, it, it, I mean, it's like brand new. So tell us about the sound. Since now this is the first time you really got to play it. I know. I finally got to play it. <laughs> like I've had the M for a month. <laughs> um, what do you think? Oh, it's, it's, man, it's like pure horsepower. It's crazy. That 14 watt amp. It, it, it smokes my Vox. It, it's, yeah, and it's just, it is clear. It is just clarity. Um, it sounds like each guitar sounds completely on its own. It doesn't like, it doesn't sound like it's being played out of a Vox, which I love that sound. It's just a different sound. And I wanted something that was just like, take all the other sounds away from except what the guitar and or the speakers sound like. And that's what I got. So, so <clears throat> how do you, I mean, are you putting it next to your? Do you have a combo, or is it you have just a head? No, so I got that. I've got a small lunchbox head, mm -hmm. and now uh, okay. the two twelve. But the two twelve is is actually relative. It's it's almost the same size as my AC fifteen, which is crazy to think about. Like the the space on either side of those speakers, like three quarters of an inch. I mean, they have that thing so snug in there. Um, and and it's got a metal grill, but not like a you know like a hairband metal grill. It's yeah. like a really nice like. It's, oh, so yeah. I'm looking at this image grill. here. Yes. How do you? Are you gonna have to move the handle the, and stuff? The two one two V. No, oh, no, it just the, the 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 amp the amp has feet and it sits okay, right on top so of it. Like but the cool thing is, it's got feet. The uh, the actual um, cabinet has feet uh, to set it either lengthwise or stand on end, which is cool because then you get a projection up towards you because otherwise yeah. I'm going to put it on my stand so I can, Tilt you know, my ankles don't need to hear what my amp sounds like. I need to hear it. So anyways, that's that. La. So you're happy with it. Quest is over. You yes. think so? I think so. The, okay. I mean, 
got brand new. It's got yeah. V30s in it, man. I'm right. not. I'm not just talking about the the cabinet. I'm talking about the whole setup now. I mean, I just need a whole lot more pedals. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. But that's, you look really that's the key. We'll and probably some it. new pickups. Oh yeah. And probably a new guitar. Yo, all those things. <laughs> yeah. If only I knew somebody that had Oh, Jared Brandon's in the house. He I'm makes right, pickups. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk around me, guys. I'm here. Um yeah, and then at some point in time I w- I hope to have a Lincoln hanging in my room. That I'm just in love with these they things. They are gorgeous. Um if only we had the guy from Lincoln to talk to about that. Oh. oh man. Hey. Um okay, so with that we covered everybody, right? I think so, right? Yes, Aaron? Covered. Aaron? Okay. Um, so we're talking to Derek O'Brien of Lincoln Guitars. And the reason we are doing that is because um, I spend a lot of time on Instagram, and <laughs> as most of us who are into guitars do, um, or whatever you're into, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Instagram. But uh, we all know that the guitar world is exploded on Instagram. Um, and I recall just kind of flipping through and seeing uh, this one model guitar. Um, and I'm trying to remember what the... N- Click on that one. Click. That one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to remember the, the model. I, I wrote, actually, Derek, I wrote you immediately when I saw that. I was like, oh. holy crap, that might be the sweetest guitar I've seen, and I can't even remember how long. It's the, oh, uh, the red back um, uh, black. Oh, the Bigsby. Black flat with the Bigsby, like the yeah. offset. Oh. Yeah, I love, I love that one. Oh, man. It just tickled my toenails. Anyways, <laughs> so I said, um, uh, uh, actually, you, believe it or not, were one of the catalysts for, for – um, how I, how we kind of went about choosing people that we wanted to talk to. Um, it just has taken a really long time for us to, uh, to connect, but I'm glad we are. Um, yeah, me but too. I, I, you know, I, I saw your work and I said, this is the kind of stuff that I want to feature on the show. I want to, I want to talk to people who make amazing things, who are, injecting their own voice. I, I have a lot of respect for anybody who's making anything, period. I have so much more if it is being made with one's own voice injected into it. Um, and, you know, aside from straight up copying something else, like, yes, your craft still is there, and I appreciate that. But if you're able to find a, a unique voice um, and, and, uh, share that, uh, I, I'm just, that it deserves to be on what somebody that we're talking to. So I'm going to turn it over to Derek to talk about how this all started. Um, and you know, all that good stuff about Lincoln guitars and, and how you got the name and all that stuff. So um, Derek, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. I'm, I'm sorry it took a while, um, but um, yeah, my name's Derek. Um, the, the actual company Lincoln's only been around for kind of a little under a year, um, but I've been building for about 15 years for other companies. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was um, uh, my background is really in sort of um, violin family instruments. Uh, the first place I sort of apprenticed was this company called King Double Bass, uh, which is now Blast Cult. And um, their whole thing was really just um, sort of upright basses and, you know, the occasional cello. And it was all just sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah, I recognize these. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were, he's a big double bass player here. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. He needs a yeah, ladder for it, but I mean, he'd love to play it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they, they take up some room. <laughs> Um, but no, I loved it there and I was there for about six years kind of on and off and, uh, yeah. And then they started making guitars and I was kind of there for when everybody was sort of learning how to build guitars over there. Mm -hmm. And we, we did it the sort of worst way possible, which was to get the most complicated book there is, which was the Benedetto book. 
So the, the first guitar I ever made was a um, neck through hollow body with the body orbiting the oh, neck. Geez. And, it, and it, <laughs> it, it almost killed us, man. It was like, um, like quadruple bound and it was all this. Holy um, it, it came out really nice, but it was, there, was a, there was quite a few smashed sort of prototypes wow. to try to get it there. Um, but yeah, that's basically where I learned how to do pretty much everything kind of initially. And they were Jason who runs Blast Cult and King Double Bass, um, when it was King Double Bass, like he was a big sort of hot rod guy. Uh Um, and that's, you know, that's where kind of the paint jobs came from. And it was, um, yeah, it's basically where I learned how to paint. And that's, you know, I've been trying to, uh, like you brought up that that blue sparkle one and that was kind of very much in the same vein as what they would do yeah um yeah. As and then, looking at all this stuff mm-hmm. i can see the as we look at the bases and we look at these books i can kind of see there's a little hot rod influence. yeah there's like this 50 yeah we can just kind of see where it's oh it's, it's translated over, yeah, yeah to your stuff. yeah yeah no that that cool. stuff definitely sticks you know um but yeah, and it was just all the, you know, it was very much sort of, you know, 50s design stuff that was, you know, sort of very much browbeaten into me. Yeah. Um, and then when I left King, um, I went to work for Michael Spalt, who, who does Spalt Instruments. Um, and he did this sort of very um, kind of specific sort of curio box, kind of top, like res. Um, potted and resin guitars oh right like like a lot of sort of found objects Uh and um and that i actually wasn't there very long i was only there about a year but uh michael over there um that guy is probably like the best luthier i've ever met um and he did a lot of repair um at a place called la guitar garage um which was which i honestly i feel like the repair was more helpful than a lot of things because you kind of got to see every type of guitar that comes through right and kind of can see the sort of where something's going to break when it will break and you know um kind of ideas that didn't work out and i i think the repair kind of had a lot to do with how the guitars got designed for lincoln because it's you know if you look at them they're pretty minimal um you know there, there's some exceptions where we kind of pack everything in there but it, a lot of it is the idea of you know the less moving parts the better yeah um, sort of just, you know, uh, just indestructible, really. That's the hope, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, well, they are minim- there, there's a minimalism there, but the, the sheen and the, um, you know, it, it's just right. So, yeah, yeah. It's just right. So yeah, tell, us, tell us about what you were, in, so now you're at Lincoln. Yes. And is that, uh, is that just you? Is that a... Is that a group of people? Tell us about that. Um, it's it's basically just me. Um, I have some friends, like other builders in town, that uh, will help me out occasionally when I get swamped, um, like with kind of setups, right. um, things like that, just trying to get something out the door. Um, I have kind of a shared shop space with um, my friend Matt Needham um, from Needham Guitars. And, um, and he's really sort of, I always try to credit him a lot with... Um, kind of design stuff because he really gets a lot of um, texts in the middle of the night for me of um, drawings and ideas and it's kind of a good sounding board if I'm on the wrong track which often I am Uh Um, so that guy really um, and it's been nice kind of sharing a shop space that's cool with him yeah that's cool Um, so so you are the the founder I I didn't want to misspeak and call you the founder of, of Lincoln Guitars, but you, in fact, are the founder of Lincoln Guitars. Yes. Yay. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was a little worried when you started talking. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Have I misunderstood this completely? And there's like a whole company <laughs> right. behind it. No, I'm, I'm, their, I'm their PR guy, and they have, it's like a, it's a team of dozens. <laughs> <laughs> Slow, um, slowly turning out guitars. Well, I'll import it from China. So, um, and, and right now you are, uh, oh, well, like, what kind of, what kind of volume are you typically doing? Um, it's really small. So is it like one all, one it's, off it's, guitars, or you make a batch and sell them off? And it's then... about if um, it's about two to three guitars a month. Okay. Well, no, they've, they've, they've pretty basically fast, all actually. been made to order. Um, yeah, it's yeah. it's when I sort of 
um, like uh, the sort of the beginning of the year, um, I kind of wasn't opening it up for sales. Like there was just a few months of, um, you know, I was just making bodies and necks and then kind of sort of preparing, you know, for what would be sort of uh, kind of a standard run. Yeah. Um, so for a second, I had some back stock of um, kind of bodies and necks, but I kind of burned through those pretty quickly. So. Yeah. What was the um, what yeah, was the guitar that you pretty much like? I'm... Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, please. I was going to say what um, w- you know, you've got a lot, a, a shockingly large amount of very unique looks. I mean, these are when you when you're scrolling through Instagram and some go like, you know, you 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 see things that you recognize and you're like, yep, 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 yep. Boom. What? I haven't seen this. You have most of your guitars are like that, um, which I I can't applaud you enough for that. Um, oh, thank you. And I'm just curious, like, the, the, with all the people that we are interviewing and and talking with, there seems to be like you know the one that kind of puts them on the map, or like it goes like, well, I had like 50 people checking us out, now I got 300. What? Right. So wh- what do you what is that design that that did that for you? Um, it's probably, we have one, the, I mean, the guitars, um, there's one that's kind of based, um, pretty heavily on a Gibson non-reverse Firebird. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of, if you look on the site, there's kind of some flat, flat top ones, which would be the chambered ones. And then there's a few with sort of like a very heavy bevel on the top. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and that one seems to have had the best response so far because it's, um, I love non-reverses. Is the bitter bird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bitter bird. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, and it's, that one. Like, it, uh, it's really weird. The the one with a really heavy bevel. I had. Yeah. I must have looked at that like, like gone past it and said, "Wait a minute!" Did my, I, my it was playing with my eyeballs, and that that one is called the rye and rye. Is it not? No, that's this one. I think. Oh, sorry. The bitter. Okay, so the one with the really really heavy bevel, and now granted. We're talking oh, about that one's, that one's the bitter bird. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the bitter bird. So um, those of you who are um, familiar with ins- the the Instagram feed or um, you know happen to be looking at the computer right now, that's the that is the very unmistakable one that has an, a very heavy bevel up on the top. Um, you know, like a forearm bevel, um, but it's it's just really exaggerated and has has a um, a short tuxedo style um uh pick guard with a single a single p90 p90 and two humbuckers are those uh that's a junior i'm assuming that's the juniors with just the p90 yes okay the, and yes. those are full is it full range wide range wide range. Wide, yeah. those are wide yeah. range pickups yeah those ones those are actually um those are roadhouse um wide range uh slug buckers okay and um they're they're really great they're sort of kind of a lower wind, um, super, they have a lot of clarity. They're yeah. not, um, like I, I sometimes am, a, I'm not the biggest PAF person in the world. Uh-huh. Like I, I like a good amount of clank out of a guitar. Yep. Um, so, you know, I tend to like the lower wind stuff and, and Ken at Roadhouse does yeah. a really great job. Um, you know, some of the things, uh, that I just, I just want to touch on and maybe this will spark a couple conversation you know, points here but um you know you mentioned you have a really minimal minimal design and we also mentioned oh there's definitely some um hot rod culture that's inextricably tied to guitars no matter what like yeah it doesn't yeah. matter what kind of guitar you look at you can yeah, see a even, car in that yeah um but i think your the, your approach um you've you've taken it, it's like you t- took off all the obvious things and focused on the least obvious and then sort of said how can i do that different um i mean the, the simply if you just look at your pick guard shapes alone like those are completely and utterly unique oh thank at, you at least that i've ever seen yeah. i don't know about you guys but yeah and the, the in, way they're inverted the shape you know they they were inversely shaped to the body. 
it's yeah, really it looks nice. like it, it wouldn't work. Like if you just showed it, if you just had all the pieces laying there, you'd be like, what? And then you put it together and like, holy hell. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, the, and like just even the you know the tail piece. I uh, one you that you recently did. You had like a, a flat plate, a very long uh, tail piece uh, that was like brushed aluminum. I think on like a is that like a shell pink? Um, it's, it's oh, got, I know. It's it got the gold kind of on neck. A cream one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that one. That was like uh, when we were talking about the repairs earlier. That was a that was part of that because they're the, the Gibson the Maestro Vibrolas. Yeah. Um, like I love those, but it's so hard to find one, um, that works properly. You know? Yeah. Like you, you can find an old vintage one and the leaf spring on there is generally pretty sturdy, but a lot of the reissues, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot. Yeah. Um, and I just love the way that they look and it's, it's part of that. Um, you can kind of, you know, with an offset, there's so much space that sometimes when it's empty behind the bridge, um, it just looks like something's missing. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, the functionality of it isn't, isn't, it's really sort of just hiding the string block. Yeah. Um, but I just, so that's uh, a vibrato just, then. Um, no, it isn't. no, no, it's just, it's, uh, it it's, gives it that vintage look. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, was, like uh, I thought you were about to tell me that there, that that was actually a vibrato underneath that. And then I was going to lose no. my mind. There's yeah, the, on the first, back. You got to yeah. push it with first, your knee. <laughs> yeah. There's a little knee lever. Yeah. Yeah. No, the first one is actually kind of an accident. Like the the cream one that is it's on the website. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a cavity underneath, uh -huh. uh, which originally um, the customer wanted a fuzz circuit in. Oh. Um, so that was kind of a, a hiding place for it. Interesting. Um, but in the end, up they decided they they didn't want to go that route. Yeah. But I just it's you know it's one of those happy accidents where, um, you know I was I just ended up really liking that tailpiece. Yeah. Well. Um, so <clears throat> I know this is kind of turning into the Todd gushing on Lincoln guitar. All show. right. I'll ask a question. Please ask it. Cause I, Sorry. I'm, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, you will. So somebody's going to have to stop me. The, the thing I noticed was the position of the volume and tone controls and pickup switch, or they're all like recessed back where you normally wouldn't find them out of the way. I'm assuming. Yes. So that's, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that was, um, it's. Um, I've, I've, um, I'm kind of a very ham fisted guitar player. Um, like I tend to just, um, kind of attack the thing and accidentally hit knobs and accidentally hit oh, switches. And and, both, man. Yeah. It's just, it's all like, I've, like I've always wanted a strat, but anytime I get one, I'm just constantly hitting that volume knob, which, which I know is in a convenient place for kind of like sweet swells, but I've never been coordinated enough to pull those off. Right. Yeah, because that's sitting um, back like what about four inches, four or five inches from where you normally have your hands situated. Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 a, ways it's back. a little bit far. Yeah, and a lot of it, but it's sort of um, you know when you kind of drop your arm, it tends to land in kind of a natural location. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna gush a little bit more real quick. It's not so, your turn. So, <laughs> no, sorry, no, Jared, go. Yeah. So, when I go to a guitar shop and I see some. You know, handmade guitars, that uh, brands that I've never seen before, and I'm like, oh, check these out. The first thing I notice, and what I look for when I pick one of these guitars up, a foreign guitar in my mind, is the weight. That's that's the first thing I look at when I buy a guitar, electric right. guitar. It's the weight. So, what's the average weight of these guitars? Um, if something without a mastery um, vibrato, um, I try to shoot for six and a half pounds. Wow. Um, and that's, that's the, um, the jazz master type ones, the gin, um, that has kind of a full body depth, the uh, inch and three quarters, but they're just really, really chambered out, mm. um, with the bitter birds, cause the body's so big, it's actually, um, an inch and a half as far as the depth goes, mm. but it's, I just feel like six and a half, seven pounds. That's kind of always felt like a, kind of a Goldilocks area for me. Right. Um, yeah. It's just like it's not it's heavy enough to not feel flimsy and it's you know not an anchor so jared do you like a heavy guitar is that what you're implying no you like super light guitars yes i do why yeah. is that that's so weird because you're huge <laughs> well i don't know i just do he likes I, a little I, small I, I guitar. Know. I, yeah maybe, so you can crush maybe they it resonate you better or mm. i don't know no it's it's mostly because i i have a bad back and Okay. I used right. to gig yeah. out in four sense. hours with a heavy guitar yeah. on your shoulder. 
Right. You know, that stinks. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, yeah, if you if you've had a Les Paul custom for any amount of time. Seventies. Yeah, it's it's you know, you have thirteen pounds on your shoulder. You know, I mean they look cool. Yeah. Super, yeah, you know. Yeah, I know. I mean, on your site, you show how you chamber the chamber most of those things. So it's not just that you're choosing a, a lightweight wood. I mean, you're going to great lengths to eliminate weight, correct? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, what yeah. I was going to ask was what I noticed. The first thing I noticed when I looked at your site was you really have a you have a brand here. You have like a, a good brand. Like all of these guitars, even though you've got a, several different body types, um, like when I see one, I'm like, ah, this is the yeah, same guitar that is as rare the other one these and, days. And oh, the, no. So I want to commend you on. So I know I'm gushing. You know, no, no, I, no, I really appreciate that. The it's discipline. Nice to, it's, no, it's nice to know that that kind of translates. You know, yeah. I am um, like them being congruous was like a really big deal. You know, it's, um, you know, it's 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 years and years of sort of when I start a guitar company, it's going to be like this. Yeah. And it's, you know, there was some, there was some kind of failed design attempts along the way. And it's, no, it's really kind of bolstering that you, to know that you feel like they're congruous. Yeah. Well, you know, you got at least two of the people here that you got one maker of things. You have a, a researcher and thinker of things in Jay. And then Jeff and I are both, we come from, from a design background. So, I mean, you're, when we're talking about the, the, the small things that you're, you're checking out, um, it, it's like those, the, the little, um, the little decisions that you're choosing, just even like just a painted back, something that most people aren't going to see, but like the, the latest one. Okay. So the first I was just like, Okay, the flat top offset. I can't remember the name of it. You gotta tell me the name of this guitar. Um, with the Brent, Jared, what what are those pickups? Those are like a D Armin style. Pickup. D Armin style pickups with the with yeah. the Bigsby on it. What is the yeah. name of that guitar? Uh, it's a Jim. The Jim. Okay. Yeah. So the, they're they're, that, they're all they're all named after booze. Okay. Nice. <laughs> when I first saw that one, that one's the one that I lost my mind on. Okay. And then I was like, guys, guys, guys. And then I saw the Bitter Bird, and I was like, oh dang it, guys, 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 <laughs> look at this. And then you come out and you drop that silver, uh, the, the, I think it's a, a, a silver, um, it's the one with the tuxedo style, the short, oh shoot, where is it? Yeah, it's, it looks like a bitter bird, but it doesn't have the bevel. Oh, it's the, with the red back? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh, thank that, you. That dang near killed me on the spot. And you got a clear plexi uh, uh, pick guard. Yeah. Good Lord, look at that thing. Oof. But when you're talking no. like aesthetic, I need a you... cigarette or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Trying to figure out a guitar aesthetic, like I've dreamed about it. Yeah, you know, played with it. Drew we've all we've all done it. that. Everybody, like, uh, we've all done that. The people who are listening, you know that you've created a guitar in your head. We've done an episode yeah. specifically on that. Go ahead. Jeff. So yeah. finding a shape, it's got to be hard to do. I mean, challenging. First of all, finding a shape that you can say looks unique or different in the industry. And then making sisters and brothers of that that you know resemble each other that fit in a family. Yeah. Which, I don't know. It's pretty. That sounds like an interesting challenge. And I imagine you probably went through like hundreds of different designs. Or did you nail it? Like you had it in your oh, head the whole time. No, like, not, not at all. No, there was there's so much stuff that got scrapped. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was it's it took some time. Yeah. But, um, well, so here here's another here's another thing that like I'm. <laughs> I'm gonna sound like an idiot. Like, no, that's yeah, I mean, I already normal, have. You right? got my attention. I love the painted. I love the painted headstock. That's sweet. Hmm. It's yeah. like you. It's you don't see a whole lot of those anymore. Yeah. Um, mm. I like the painted headstock. And thanks. The um um. I think I'm, I mentioned this on on one other episode. You've come up a few times in our episodes. Um, but uh, uh, before we way before we started this, I think this may be about two years ago. I told Jeff, I, uh, we worked together, and I said, said, oh, man, I was messing around last night, and I, and I, I, I got an idea for what I want to do with my Telecaster. And I said, I want to I wanna switch. I, I want to put the, uh, uh, the inlays from, from 3 to 9 all the way up. 
on the, on the sixth on the sixth position, and I want the and I want from twelve back on the first position, and then what it what happens? What do I see? Oh, yeah. And I was like, no, he right. did it. Right. <laughs> no, and, it, I mean uh, it makes sense. That's kind of where you're staring, you know. Right. Yeah. No, I I can't take credit for that. I had I had seen that on a base somewhere forever ago. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I know I, I, that that is that has been. Uh, you know, I've, I have seen that in. At some level, I mean, Billy Sheehan's base, he kind of does that on his, except he's got massive block inlays. Right. Um, cutouts. But, uh, yeah, so that just all that stuff in, in concert, it was just like, it's one really great decision after another, and that's why I think um, they just, you know, captivated us. Um, and, you know, recently on your Instagram feed and uh, uh, Facebook, too, you, you've – been able to feature uh, a few prominent folks out there uh who are touring with your guitars which is really cool to see i'm sure yeah no it's um no that's really great i mean it's the um kind of the whole point of them is that they get gigged you know and yeah. it's it's um yeah, it, and that just makes me really happy you know it's there that they're just out and on the road yeah um the um actually the one that you were talking about that you said that you initially were very fond of the black one. That's putting the red it mildly, back. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can, um, yeah, that one, that one went to Dan from Wolf Parade. Right. And, um, I'm so happy it went to him. Yeah. You know, it's, oh, it's well, they sound fantastic. I mean, Thanks. yeah. Um, and what about the one, there's one with a volume knob in the middle, in the center of the vibrato. The, yeah. Where, let me find that one. That was, the red really one. unique. Oh, it was the red and had the kind of cream pickguard. Yeah. Yeah. So, that. Um, <laughs> that one. He's making fun of me. Oh, I, wait, there it is. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's got. Is that a mini? Uh, it's a mini humbucker gold foil. Or is yeah, that, that one. That's thing? another Roadhouse one. That's like kind of a copy of a Japanese gold foil. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, like a Tysco or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the knobs on the kind of behind the bridge, um, that was something I was hoping would work out better than it did. Um, I think because I had the knob and the jack on there as well, mm -hmm. um, but I was kind of got concerned about the the actual the acrylic cracking just from sort of uh, wear and tear on the jack. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm gonna give it another whirl again with aluminum. I think that'll be kind of more sort of hard wearing. Yeah. Yeah, that would look pretty sweet. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, man, spun. Although, I don't know. Yeah, anyways, why well, I'm telling you. But <laughs> oh, yeah, I should try this. <laughs> got another yeah. idea for yeah. you. <laughs> spun aluminum. You know, that'd be. Um, but that, you know, that fits for the. I'm just saying. Anyways, um, so w tell, uh, talk to us a little bit about how you're going about crafting these things. Um, I Obviously, there are some, I think there's some generally understood. Um, notions of how one goes about building these guitars, but maybe talk about a few of the things that you have either taken and um, uh, maybe done your own way um, without, you know, giving up any of your secret sauce. Um, you, you know, is it, uh, or have you found a, a unique way to do your, uh, the necks or, uh, you know, headstock position, you it, know, whatever? It's, it's it's like shockingly low tech over here. Um, it's you know a lot of the building it's still pretty template based, um, you know. Um, but it's I'm not really doing anything. It's it's all it's all by hand, um, yeah. Kind of to a fault almost. Where it, um, you know it's the next are carved by hand. Um, I I wish I could figure out a way to do that more quickly without a CNC. Um, but in the end up I just end up you know, shaving it away kind of old fashioned with a rasp. Don't make apologies for that. That's, I mean, that's I, just the idea of having a, an actual handcrafted instrument like that where you're doing that. That's fantastic. Um, I, it's, um, it's, it's nice. It kind of <laughs> opens it up a little bit for neck profiles that people would want. Right. Um, like I'm doing one right now, um, where the guy wanted the biggest neck possible just a huge one inch baseball bat neck he can borrow my sg if he wants <laughs> nice <laughs> that's what he's going for Jeez. But, so what yeah, is but it 
it's yeah everything's by everything's by hand even a lot of the metal work i'm just um filing away and drilling holes and um it would be nice to laser cut some things but it's not on it's not in the cards right this second yeah so what is your style of neck that you is it one style that you use on all guitars that you put together or do um you alternate the uh, the standard one if someone doesn't have a preference it's fairly close to kind of um you know just a u.s fender neck sort of uh, just a modern c-shape hmm. i'm trying um, to feel it in my mind yeah does that feel like <laughs> feel it in your mind's eye yes um just just something comfy nothing too um shouldered or veed um just i mean i'm part of part of what i'm trying to go for is that you kind of don't have to think about the guitar when you're playing it um so the you know some of the ergonomic stuff came into that mm. like with the like with that bitter bird that giant bevel mm -hmm. um it's just so you know it feels fairly fluid yeah you know, the, the other thing I notice about these, I see influences or remnants of other guitars, but it's never, like, feels stolen. Like, it's like an Ibanez headstock a little bit. It reminds me of... Like a... Or, like a road, road star? Yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit. And then, destroy, uh, s then, obviously, the Gibson yeah. pieces were some influence on you, but, but yet they look like... It looks like a different... Like, I can see that if I think about it, but I don't, like, see it right away. It takes a minute for me to yeah. process your influences. You, it, it, well, it, it feels That's what's cool. It doesn't feel so alien that you're just like, wait a minute. Ah, familiar reject. somehow. There's like, a familiarity that um, is there, but it's it's so not in your face. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think that's important, you know? I, I feel like we... Uh, the um, decisions we make as far as buying a guitar, it's, it's not... You know, it's it's very sort of sentimental and nostalgic. You know, sure like there's there's guitars I love, and you know, one of those is a Roadstar and a Jazzmaster and a yeah. Converse, and you know, I'm I'm happy to, um, you know, kind of reference them. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it's there was there were some original guitars that I just feel that I did that I feel like just got way too weird, way too fast. Yeah. And, you know, some of the subtraction is just uh, and sort of is on myself as far as, you know, um, having something that, you know, doesn't feel alien, like you were saying. Yeah, I, I think you it's know. extremely intelligent because, number one, people do think of jazz masters or, you know, firebirds or whatever. But at the same time, that's a Lincoln guitar. And when you sell your guitars or you know, celebrities or pros get a hold of these and they're on TV or in a video, Lincoln guitar is is what you see. Um, I know a, a lot of other builders I deal with, build pickups for or whatever, a lot of them just do the same old Strat copy, same old Tele copy, because that's what people want, you know. But yeah, what, yeah. when you see this, Lincoln, it's, it's great. And at the same time, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you've got remnants of older styles and, and things like that. I... I think they're pretty attractive myself. No, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking about, you remember how we had a conversation not too long ago? We were talking about custom, um, well, when we were talking about custom build gu guitars, and we were thinking about basses, really, Todd. Todd and I, you were, and I were of the same mind. Fisher, you were against us on this, but oh, yeah. we were... It didn't have exotic wood, yeah, so like forget these, about it. These are, these are like, <laughs> well, they're hand, they're hand built, but then... But they don't have like 16 pieces of wood with, you know, coloring. And it looks, what am I trying to say? These don't look super duper crazy expensive, but like, but they look like they would feel uh, like totally Hello? simplistic and perfect. Yeah, we're they here. look like they have good balance too. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it, you're still there, not, right, Derek? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you cut out for a second. Drop for a second. <laughs> like, they don't look audacious and yeah. trying, I'm trying to look like a custom guitar. But right. they, but, but then they are kind of like their own thing. Yeah. So well, that's it, cool. it no, thanks. They're yeah, right in the, the pocket. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. No, the, the more than anything, um, that's, that's exactly kind of what I was kind of going for. Just sort of a utility object. Right. Um, you know, I, you know, I have friends and I build guitars for people that, um, kind of get to the point where they become sort of almost too precious. Yeah. Um, you know, they kind of, they live in a walk-in humidor and, <laughs> They, they don't really see the light of day that much. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I, I want them to get beat up and kind of dragged across stages and, you know, have 
kind of rock and roll occur on them. Yeah, I'll do that. You know, it, yeah, it's 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 what they're for, you know. Yeah. Well, and they, yeah, you know, as nice as they look, they're they sound it. They, what am I trying to say? I have no idea. They, they're, out. it's like they're screaming to be played like really loud. Like I look at that thing, and I'm like, damn, turn the volume up on that now, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you referenced the hot rod culture earlier, and Jay, to your point, you know, it's like when you see something that looks like, um. I, you know, I, I think of some of the, the, the Pontiacs that like the, the, the Trans Am models and the Camaro models and stuff where you're just, or the Firebird models. It's, yeah, it's like, you, you look at them and you're just like, there's nothing you didn't put on this car and it looks ridiculous, you know? Um, uh, unless you have no one and don't come after me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, or, 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 and, and then the, or like truck, there's some, tr- you know, people get trucks and they stop in it like, you know, uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts where they go, give it all to me. And they just like 500 yeah. reflectors the on XLT, it. Larry, it was, it was, Larry, yeah, right. the Larry. Oh my gosh. What the, yeah. Anyways, the difference between that, yeah, or, know that. Or, or even if the, or even like a, the, um, if you go to a hot rod show and you see, Okay, yeah, man, you've got you've you've managed to put every kind of like um, cliched hot rod thing on your car, and then right next to it is something with like totally shaved handles, dechromed, you know, and and you're just like, whoa, okay, wait a minute, that doesn't have everything, but it still looks super custom. That's what I think right. of when I'm looking at these. Thanks, man. Yeah, less- no, that's. That's 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 definitely what we're going for. It's um, like when someone orders a guitar, generally the first email they get from me, like one of the questions is, what's the least amount you need to make it happen? Yeah. And then we kind of work from there because it's that thing of, you know, it's a lot of times you don't need three pickups and you don't need face yeah. switching and you don't need Less a, buttons a, and lot more of, a lot of times you don't need a Bigsby, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know it's probably tough because you these are all handmade and you've conceive them all but do you have one that you're just like this is if you got to pick one as your baby which what what is that and if you don't want to say oh. that's okay but oh man that silver one with the red back yeah <laughs> that's so yeah. sweet yeah that one was my jam that's um cool. yeah i don't uh yeah I, I i currently don't own one of my guitars which is kind of hilarious that is weird <laughs> yeah um they just they they all went so Eventually, one of these days, I'm going to build myself a guitar. And I wow. think I'm just going to do that silver one over again. That is, Jared's losing his mind on the on the uh, I, uh, the white, uh, uh, what's it, bitter? It's un, unfinished. Yeah, white unfinished bitter was, with a gold hardware. So I was Instagram. looking at it, and I saw that pickguard, and I'm like, does he have Flip? those underneath pickups under that pickguard? And then I looked at it, it had no, uh, it was it's a, just not finished. It's yeah, you were, it, was a, it was a early assembly. Yeah. Oh, the... Um, a week ago, maybe. Oh, and you did do it. So, uh, so one of the things I was going to ask you, okay, in this image that we're looking at, and everybody can go to Instagram, um, Lincoln Guitars Instagram, and you can see what we're talking about. But we're, you know, I think you did, you were doing like a test assembly to, like, you know, is, does this work? Um, and it's a, you've got like a, on a, a um, uh, Olympic white with a white pickguard and gold hardware on maple fretboard. And a reverse headstock. And I was going to ask, um, you know, you've made, we've talked a lot about your design and you have some very um, distinct uh, decisions that you've made and that have somewhat been carried through your guitars. Um, are, the, are, are these things that you're like, nope, these are sticking now. I'm not going to keep changing it. I'm going let to it, let it ride. Or are you going to be continuing to evolve the, uh, those major things like the headstock shape um i mm, i think <laughs> i mean as far as reverse headstocks go i'm okay with those i'm yeah. pretty happy with the headstock shape but um as far as the rest of it i'm totally fine with it being sort of as malleable as possible mm-hmm. um like i i um We got you. Did we lose you? Don't say. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a long time, I was I like I was got sort of hung up on the idea of. Hello. 
Yep, we're there. Hello? Yeah, hello? Hey, oh, oh sorry. No, I was saying, um, <laughs> yeah, I got sort of hung up on the idea of like a flagship guitar. Uh-huh. You know, that just had to be perfect and kind of represent everything. Um, and, you know, I've sort of slowly gone over that as time's gone on. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, it's, 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 everything's kind of in progress. I mean, just, just that right there, um, I think the fact that you um, are, are building these one-offs and have had the wherewithal, you know, I don't know if it's wisdom or, you know, just sound state of mind to say, I'm not, I'm not married to one of these. I don't have to have the one that's like, no, this is my one where right. I can't change ever. I, that takes a lot of discipline, uh, creative discipline. That's hard to do. Um, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a really, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to let go of. It was, um, when I worked for Michael at Spall, um, one of the things he had said to me, cause he just, um, watching that guy work was kind of amazing cause he would just slowly and without much fanfare, just get things done. Um, and I was, I was talking to him about design stuff and how I've been kind of hung up on, you know, um, just my own guitar things. And he was talking about how it sort of doesn't really matter. It's kind of, that the guitars can change from the original idea as long as sort of the the guitar that you're currently working on like when it goes out that that's mm -hmm. the best guitar you've ever made yeah I get um, that. and that it's just this kind of ongoing learning process yeah and i've kind of tried to stick to that that's cool um no now one thing we really haven't touched on is um lincoln guitars what what's that all about oh i'm just i'm i'm from chicago <laughs> okay Lincoln yeah, Park is that? No, no. I just I kind of liked how vague and industrial it sounded. Oh, okay. Because um, you know, a, a Sue and O'Brien guitars, um, you know, has a, has a nice ring to it. But I kind of like the vagueness, the um, you know, just kind of the industrial aspect of it. You know, there's like yeah. Lincoln Electric and Lincoln well, Tool and Die. Yeah, it's a trusty thing. It's like yeah, anything that the name Lincoln is usually attached to is like. Yeah, this is yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, it was it was also attached to this idea that I ended up completely scrapping, which was that the original headstock had a penny inlaid in the logo or in the headstock. Yeah, we saw one of those. Yeah, and it was I was going to do some relict ones, and it was depending on the year, like how relict it was supposed to be, you'd have a corresponding penny. <laughs> wow. So like it was like fifty <laughs> years of like heavy wear. I'd try to find like a fifty-four penny. Or, you know, if it had kind of a neon paint job, I was going to put like an 87. Wow, that's yeah. a that's an interesting play. And you just, it's, you didn't do that? You didn't, it, um, I did a I think I did four with the penny headstock. Um, so and those then are collector I, items now. Those are collector items now, yeah. And um, it just, the idea just became too precious. So yeah, I get it. It was, it was one of those things I just had to kind of ditch. Was that something that maybe you picked up? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I forget the name of the guy that does the, um, that did the uh, uh, acrylic inlays. Oh, the Michael Spalt. Yeah. Um, probably it was the, yeah the, yeah it must have been the yeah. sort of the found object kind of aspect of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, cool, man. I. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. It, it's weird. It's it's hard. It's hard to not continue. We're just we just keep looking at all the pictures while we're sitting here talking um, to get a visual. But um, uh, are you? Uh, I guess you know. Where are you headed as far as um? You know, are are you going to still continue to just kind of knock these uh? You know, one to two out a month. Are you? Are you, you know, looking at, at, at growing, expanding, or do you have any special builds in the future? What, what's, what's up for you? Uh, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with um, the production rate right now. Like mm -hmm. it's knowing that I can have hands on kind of every instrument that goes out the door um, is very, it's really important. Um, you know, eventually down the line, I'd like to make some cheaper guitars, like maybe CNC'd and, you know, with similar design things. Yeah. Um, just cause it's, it's that thing of, you know, you think like, you know, the working man can't get, you know, a $2,500 guitar. Right. You know? And right. if I could, if I could do something for eight or 900 bucks, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But with all the handwork right now, it's just not, it's, it's not viable. Right. Uh, 
actually a couple more questions. So, um, electronics wise, uh, are you, are you using, uh, are you doing all the electronics yourself or how, how's that working out like for you? Like wiring harnesses. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, um, yeah, uh, aside from building the actual pickups, I'm doing all the wiring. It's pretty tidy in there. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah. Uh, I get real OCD about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, the, the pretty much doing every, every component of it aside from hardware and pickups. Man, too so, sweet. So I have a question. Uh, I like the fact that you have options like, uh, on reverb if somebody wants to buy something they have all these choices and whatnot and i kind of do the same thing so my question to you is just I'm wondering what's the silliest or the most outrageous request that you've ever had oh man um i actually i end up saying no to a lot of things mm -hmm. um just because i don't feel like they would fit with the aesthetic mm -hmm. um you know it, it tends to fall into the category of you know um uh, float. It, it tends to fall into the like floating trim, scalloped mm. frets, um, <laughs> you know, LEDs area. Oh, you know, sometimes all three of those at the same time. Um, it sounds like so a Uli, Uli John Roth like, guitar. <laughs> pre yeah, pretty much. Yeah, tiger stripes. Wow. Like yeah. Golly, I well, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've I, has anybody else been doing making a custom like in, in their head this whole time? Yeah. I, <laughs> geez. Yeah. Well, and, you, and then you know, it's one thing to see all the shapes, and then you that you got a great shot of the of all the paint cans, and you're just Steeple. like, oh man, this what could what you know? Oof. Anyways, all right. Oh. All right, I've gushed. I've, I've publicly You're gushed. You're done. I'm. I might be. Um. Anyways. Thank all you. right. You bet, man. Um. Hey, let's move to our top four real quick. Oh yeah, we almost forgot about that. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Oh man, that, that, that bums <laughs> me out. I'm just kidding. All right, top four. Our um no, guitar knob style of choice, and uh, you want to? You want to do your uh, awesome top four thing that you did last time, Jay? What did I do? So <laughs> <laughs> you just said top four. Top four, four, four. 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 Nice. nice. Yeah. Very good job. Um, okay, so guitar knob of choice. And Jeff, go. Skull. You bastard. I knew Skull you were going to do something like that. Love him. <laughs> I want like four, I know for a fact you don't skull love knobs. <laughs> Who team. doesn't love skull knobs? <laughs> yeah. One person here does not love skull knobs. Skull. I don't know why that is. Yeah. Don't know why. Okay, what is it? Ah, uh, this is a tough one because I like a unique knob. Ha ha ha. I don't have any, but I would. I like the idea of custom knobs or custom style knobs. So I'm like looking at these guitars. There, the knobs are unique, right? They're different. They're not the normal type of knob. Yeah, I love that idea. Uh -huh. So I love the look of something that is custom or unique. And I don't really have a favorite style, but okay. something that just is not the expected. So, so you, metal, like metal dice? or plastic? Yeah. Metal, definitely metal. Okay. Um, like I love some of the custom Telecaster knobs that people have made with like the knurled metal with yep. interesting engraving on them. Like, like exotic wood inlays. Say nah, it. Just say it. I don't. I don't know if I like wood knobs. <laughs> don't know if I like those. Okay. Uh, Jared. Just <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right. Just like the jewelry guy. It keeps yeah. messing me up. No longer like the subway guy. I like chrome domes. Man. I like uh, I like those, and I'm gonna elaborate too. And I like those the best when they're on a good quality uh, pot. Yeah. Geometer when when they have a little resistance to them. That's my favorite. If yeah, you were to blindfold me, that's what I want. That's yeah. what I want to feel. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. Uh, let's go to Jay. All right, so I'm playing Jane. So I was thinking about the knobs. So I'm going to kick your ass. I like knobs. I like to look at knobs. Um, I like little knobs to get my baby hand on. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't even believe I'm in here with you bozos. So, <laughs> okay. so I'm, I'm going to say 
I'm the plain Jane because I just like the flat top. The ones that came came on the P base that I had, I, I love those. The 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 knurled. You guys have all said this basically the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not like going crazy. I mean, it, the knob to me, like, I don't need dice or like skulls or the knob goes from it rotates, right? And so yeah. it doesn't have to be, like, uh, you know, made out of, you know, whale's bone, <laughs> whale bone, <laughs> or t- elephant yeah. tusk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please don't no, make wait it out of elephant tusk. Like Those that. are all illegal, anyways. Yeah. Right. Well, illegal it's scrimshaw. Material. I don't need a scrimshaw <laughs> like a uh, knob. Just a, a metal knob okay. with some friction that I Yeti can turn. Yeti bone. All right. I get you. So. <clears throat> Uh, I will, will, I will go and then we'll wrap up with, um, with, with, uh, Derek. Um, so I liked the flat top metal nor like on a standard telly. Right. But my, I found when I was rolling off, uh, volume and stuff, um, which I had to do a lot, um, not for dynamics, but because I was like having to, I was singing, so I didn't want it on the whole time, but I'd look. And uh, and I was like, I don't know where I'm at. Like, I can kind of feel, but then I'm like, I, it's different every time. Like, I need to see something. I want to look down and see something. So I personally, and I like the aesthetic of these two. Uh, I like uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the Fender Jazz, uh, jazz bass knobs. Um, I, put, I actually put those on my telly. Um, and uh, if uh, put them on a, 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 the, my other telly actually after that, uh, which had witch hats on it, um, and uh, that was the custom, the custom too. Um, so I, 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 there's something cool about the aesthetic of of those. I like the chrome ones, and I like the the feel of the neural, but I just I'm like I I could be anywhere on this thing. I don't know. So, uh, so that's me. That's that's my that's my choice. So Derek. What do you have? Um, I love those Gratch uh, metal knobs with the arrow on them. Aha. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, they. I like the. I like how substantial they are. Yeah, and you the, have you substantial know. knobs on yours. That's for sure. Yeah, you gotta gotta have a substantial knob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made a knob joke. Good. Yeah. All right. Nice. Hey. All right. Well, with that, uh, we're gonna send this thing home. Derek, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you bet. We're we're thrilled to have you on, um, and uh, hope to have you back on uh, again at another time. And of um, we'll make uh, some more announcements, uh, maybe concerning him uh, a little bit later. Once we get the website up, you guys will see. It's it's really close. Nice. Um, anyhow, um, all right, we are out. Thank you guys so much for listening and. Bye bye. What was that? Is that <laughs> your sign off? I don't know. No, that's not. It's not. <laughs> we all made like, a I was like Elvis. Was right. trying to be Elvis? You made a face and everything. Mm. So, thank, you, thank you very much. So, um, bye bye. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you in the face. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please join us on Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash guitar knobs, and tell us what you think and share your stories and guitar stuff along with ours. You can also find us at twitter.com forward slash guitar underscore knobs and also at our website at guitarknobs.podbean.com.